Eight, did you say? Mm. Yeah. Hi, and uh, welcome everyone to Elevate Your Wellbeing, Contagious Care. This is a, our 68th session and just want to welcome my husband, John. We, we just, we're not sure whether we've got great reception. Um, a couple of things have happened, but please let me know uh, in this session in more ways than one. There's a storm coming and I'm wondering whether you're here. So please um, give us your likes and loves. Let us know in your comments how you feel about the transition out of COVID. Please put in your comments so we know you're here because something weird is happening with this, uh, with our connection. So let's, let's start. Let's start. What's, what's the transition for us? Let's, hmm. let's begin. Yep. So I'm sure you've been busy watching the uh, TV, watching the vaccination rates slowly climb 60, 70, 80, 90 percent and uh, thinking this is fantastic. Things are going to go, things are going to change. This is going to be incredible. But the challenge is there's not a magic number where all of a sudden the world returns to normal. There's a transition because we've been stuck in the 18 months or so of COVID and all the changes that's brought. And it doesn't always, straight away a little switch doesn't turn and uh, things get back to normal again. Because uh, even though we've hated it and it's uh, come with so many drawbacks, it has almost become normal for us. And it's such a change to get out of that normal. Because we as humans don't like transitions. We don't like going from one thing to the other because it brings up uncertainty. It brings up a lack of control. And all of us want to have some sense that we can control our life. Into this new life, this wonderful life that we missed. Um, and just the, the, the nervousness with that, as Jane's saying, not having crossed the line north in over <laughs> three months, you're a little nervous. That's right. And the north for us is the other side of the river we can see from our back deck. <laughs> so, so we're not able to see people who we can actually see from our balcony, their houses, but we're not allowed to see them. We haven't been able to for four months. So, yeah, that's so true, Jane, that... that uh, that transition is really the unpredictabilities of what what life looks like. You know, I'm jumping at the opportunity of being able to see our grandkids on the 2nd of November, which has been put back and back and back. But it's been four months and it's just been a bit of agony, mm -hmm. really, hasn't it? Has it? Been. Made, mm -hmm. It's made us realise... We knew before, mm. we so knew in our hearts mm. Mm. before, just how dearly we love them, how much they are a part of our lives. But boy, it's been, it's been really heart-wrenching at times, exactly. hasn't it, not being able to mm. see them. Mm. And, and uh, we even noticed that with our twins when we walk with them on the headland at the start of COVID, and um, they'd see other people coming towards them on the path, and they'd straight away get off the path and stand right aside. So here are four-year-olds. <laughs> At that stage, mm. they were sort of nervous of being near people because they've been trained that uh, you don't get close to people. Uh, yeah. And then you go to uh, shops or banks and there's little crosses where you've got to stand and you've got to keep your two metres apart from people. These are changes are very hard to get used to. And if it's hard for us to get used to as adults, imagine what that's like for kids who mm. just haven't got this concept of what COVID really is all about on this global level because yes. they don't think globally. And so to try and understand, like um, Christine was telling me the other day how, you know, when they took the kids to Manly Beach, because now they can have the Greater Sydney experience, um, the twins were saying, why can't we go and see Nana and Papa's Beach? Why can't we go there? We, won't, we don't want this beach. We want Nana and Papa's Beach. That's <laughs> predictability. And to try and do this smoothly when we've got a mixture of emotions going on inside. Mm. And the important thing is to acknowledge that it is a transition. You know, the fact that we can acknowledge this, it helps us um, avoid extreme thinking. You know, we don't go from a pandemic straight back to normal as we knew it before. Because that normal no longer will ever exist. Mm. Yep. So... It's, it's looking at these, the spaces, as you were saying, with mm. takeaway, did you mm. look at, mm. yeah, just how, 
how do we give people space when we want to hug people mm. they may not feel comfortable with that exactly because of feeling vulnerable mm. health wise themselves so we have to check out mm. Mm. is it okay is, is it, it okay, okay to, to hug, hug? <laughs> to ask permission first which kind of is a good thing for many people uh, to do sometimes but with the natural people that we would obviously hug as soon as we greet them mm. and say goodbye to them that's going to be a different thing so there's lots of really tricky situations tricky to deal with that's right. so in one word if you haven't already put in how you're feeling about this transition and i'm just going to go through um so marie's saying we've got into a new pattern of normal yes carol's saying we have to come out of covid slowly good point carol mm. just can't come back to normal life immediately it's mm. like coming out of grief that's very insightful carol it's huge grief that will kind of some of us have been i know i've had my melting moments where i've been missing the grandkids so much and it's okay to just have have a meltdown about that and then to move on um, through what we have to adjust to but some who may not have had those teary moments through this time they may realize all of a sudden oh my gosh this is over and then just go into mm. big implosion of grief even though it's a happy experience because the brain does weird things that we don't quite fully understand mm. when we've been holding on to grief as some of you may have been for a while. Margaret's saying after a shaky start to connection, I hope I've just been able to stay connected like with all our adjustments during lockdown, getting back to fitness classes step by step, haha. -ha. <laughs> Good on you, Margaret. So yeah, be kind to yourself through this transitional time. Mm. Yeah, just picking up on the grief, there's a lot of grief that many people are carrying. Just think things like, um, uh, for example, say if a loved one died and not being able to go to a mm. funeral, having to decide who's the 10 people that would go to a loved one's funeral, and all the uh, milestones of life, like weddings or graduations or, or all of the things that just make the world turn around have all been put on hold, and there's a grief about that too. And... Uh, we talked about uh, the grief of not seeing the twins, but also my mum, who's in care in Epping, we haven't seen for four months. And that's been really tough for her, because each time I ring, she says, oh, when are you coming to see me? And she doesn't quite get the idea that uh, we'd love to see her, but uh, the government's got other ideas. So there is that grief. And there's so many of our touchstone experiences, our events that, that we have missed out on, and it's how we can, you know, make up for that and but doing it in a way that the other person may want to do that as well so it's going to involve a lot of communication through the losses the school milestones the sporting involvements that that uh, children have the hsc transitions of having to do things so in such difficult circumstances and then new relationships. We haven't met our son's new girlfriend. We've only met her over Zoom and we look <laughs> forward to seeing, meeting her for the first time this weekend. So it's like, yeah, to actually transition out with the good and the bad. Let us know for you what has been your good that you want to take away from this COVID challenge that you want to bring forward into this new normal. What, what is it for you, John? What can you and I bring forward? Uh, I think for me, uh, our life has been a lot bit more simple. Mm. Uh, you can tell that from looking at our calendar. We've got like liquid paper sort of crossing out all the activities for months and months and months. Our calendar looks as white as snow. It does, that's right. Because of all the, the plans that we've yes, had to white out. Exactly. And we've gone through about 10 reels of white out. That's no right. exaggeration. Yes, that's true. We just have to keep blocking out. It felt like we're blocking our life out for yeah. a while. Crossed out, crossed yeah. out, crossed out. Yeah, but yeah. This, holding. Uh, pl I've learned to hold plans lightly. Mm. To um, you know, I've always tried to hold things on the open palm of my hand. You know, without holding it with a. Some sometimes we might hold things with a clenched fist when we love things 
or people so lovingly, but we just need to hold everything on the open path. Mm. And I know Henry Nguyen talks about that and a uh, beautiful uh, philosopher and um, just how much that softens our soul and mm. soothes our soul when mm. we can do that in normal circumstances, not just in a pandemic. Mm. Mm. And I suppose what's been good for us is the fact that even though we've been cut, blocked out from a lot of our family, we've been uh, locked in with our community. And we've actually developed new relationships with people across the road, down the street, play tennis with them now, involved with land care. Uh, we've got a neighbourhood tennis, neighborhood each, tennis each week and table tennis in our other neighbour's uh, garage, land yes, care, you were yes, saying. Yes, yes. So we've sort of uh, branching inwards rather than outwards, which I think has been the positive for us. Mm, yeah. But then now, how do we balance all of that that yes. we've had time for which yes. has been lovely locally how do we balance that now lessen some of that mm. and still feel okay about deepened friendships yes yep mm. that's been a real positive so what have been your positive things that you want to take out of the COVID time and bring it forward into your general life now what are the things like um you know, we've had bonding, we've had shared adversity, um, but there are going to be more misunderstandings as we move through transitions. That's what can be a challenging part of transitions. And so in this season, as we transition out of COVID, mm. more than most any other time in history is an excellent time to share an approach to dealing with disagreements or different opinions in order to ride the wave of transition and do it well. Mm, very true. And John Gottman, the American researcher who studied thousands of couples over the last 40 years, brilliant researcher that I'm indebted to with my work, um, he quickly discovered that he could tell within the first three minutes of meeting a couple how their conflict situations were going to end up generally. Pretty amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? And in summary, the way you start is the way you're going to end. Mm -hmm. So if you enter an argument or a difficult conversation, it doesn't, it doesn't start as an argument, does it? It starts as an uncomfortable conversation. And we will have uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. through this time. Just as we have through COVID, we will have them as we transition out in order to make plans and, and tweak things for how it best works for everyone. And if you enter a difficult conversation with, you know, just your thoughts of what you want or with all guns blazing, eye on, eyes on fire, you know, that mm. quickly move to blaming and accusing, very mm. quickly the situation is going to deteriorate and mm. the relationship will denigrate. Okay. So let's look at this. Let, do you want to do yeah, a dialogue sure. of how... Yes. How we, because he talked about soft startups, yes. how to go about starting mm. a conversation mm. gently in a soothing way that will end up as a great outcome. Mm. Like Stephen Covey said, start with the end in mind. Mm. Yeah? Well, I think uh, we could reflect on it took us a while to learn this skill. And that um, on the first year of our marriage, we're mm. in a one-bedroom flat. I'd go off to work mm. and I'd leave behind all the mess everywhere, pretty much. <laughs> uh, perishables out and clothes all over the floor. Mm. Then cover doors cover open. Cover doors <laughs> open. And I'd go off and have a great time at work. And you'd be at home having to use the kitchen table for your study to do your uni work. Mm. And you'd be surrounded by mess and negative thoughts about me all day. Well, yeah, because it would just be visual. It would yeah. be so, mm. it was so visual when I was doing my final year of uni in our first year of marriage and just having to do a lot of essays, finding it mm. easier to do mm. it at home than in the library because mm. I'd get distracted in the library mm. with people. Mm. So, but then I'd go to the library and find a spot easier than all the clutter and chaos of your mess left in uh, mm. from where, where you'd been in our tiny yes. bedroom flat. Yeah, what? But my problem was in communicating yes. my frustration is that 
when you come home, mm. I'd almost hit you at it, hit you with it at the door. Well, you did. I'd, uh, I'd <laughs> open the door and say, hi, honey, I'm home. And then I'd cop both barrels, you know, about how terrible it was and how disgusting the mess was. I'd have to clean all that up first to and that took an and, hour. You know, it really wrecked your day and whatever. <laughs> And so that was as soon as I'd walk across the uh, doorstep, <laughs> I'd, I'd be hit <coughs> with both barrels. And we uh, developed a bad form of communication there mm. called the shoot-reload technique, where uh, Heather would hit, give me both barrels and I'd hide behind a barrier and reload myself. Then I'd fire back at her, then she'd quickly <laughs> hide behind and reload. And it uh, ended literally in tears, didn't it, eh? Yeah, we laugh yeah. now because it was 40 years ago. But our first year of marriage was, I'd have to say, the second most challenging year yeah. of our marriage. Yes, yeah? it, was, it was challenging because yeah. we had to learn these things. Yeah. So, um, you know, the soft startups, if we'd known that at the time or if I had thought to have a bit of insight at the time <laughs> to uh, just put my frustration aside uh, and start up with this skill of just basically... It's a gentle startup, being polite, considerate, kind, just as we would treat guests when they come in to our home. Now, we might have even forgotten how to treat guests since we haven't had <laughs> them for right. so what, long. What a guest. <laughs> what does that word mean? <laughs> but, you know, it's being that it's kind and polite and starting up a conversation in that way, a difficult conversation that you know is going to be uncomfortable to start it up that way you have much more chance of finishing it that way and having a great outcome so to start gently complain but don't blame and what, what and John Gottman talks about complaining I always thought complaining was a bad thing to do as well but in his terminology he says complaining is okay but criticizing is not which makes sense Criticising is a generalisation of the person, of their character. You get into saying you always make a mess mm. rather than I'd really appreciate you picking up your mess mm. when you have moved away from mm. getting undressed or whatever. Mm. Pick up the mess as you go. Mm. That's what I'd really appreciate. That's a much softer way of saying it rather than attacking the person. Mm. So Heather mentioned uh, Stephen Covey, who wrote a book, uh, Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of his phrases was, start with the end in mind. Mm. That means know before you start something what your goals are and then work towards those goals. So then tailor your approach to meet the end that you want to see happen. So if you want to see a certain thing happening from your discussion with uh, a loved one, work out right at the start. How is that going to happen and work towards that? So we're going to tell you some uh, rules for soft startups and we'll go through them together. And just remember the fact that uh, a soft startup's got six components. And the first thing, as Heather mentioned, is you complain but you don't blame. You can criticise, you don't criticise pretty much. For example, you mentioned always, try that on me. Yeah, well, you... you, you well, I might do something that's okay. more current, like... I could start up by saying, you, you just don't listen to me, rather than saying, I really appreciate it when you listen to me. Mm. So that's kind of moving on to another step of starting gently, but saying what you appreciate. So mm -hmm. it's an I message rather than a you message. Right. Instead of saying, you never listen. Mm. So that's a criticism of your character, yes. but also it's, it's, it's a generalisation. That's what makes it a criticism. Mm. And also when you okay. say never, the other person can quickly respond to say, oh, remember last week or last yeah. month or last year <laughs> or I did In 1969 that. on 1969, Thursday, I didn't do right. it. I listened yeah. to you in 1969. <laughs> so you can, if you say always or never, the other person can quickly switch the conversation and say, well, that's not true because last week I actually yeah. did that for sure. And starting off with an I statement rather than a you statement. Yes. Okay, so I I really love it when you listen to me mm. because I feel so valued for who I am. Mm. It makes me feel 
um, significant to you, yes. important to you. Hmm. And to be honest, it's the greatest turn on hmm. for me well, there you go. personally. Well, that's uh, that's a bit too much information for the viewing public, but uh, that's, that's no one's listening, are they? But that's important <laughs> to know, isn't it? Yeah. It's. I think it's very important that's for you right. to know. Exactly. <laughs> so that starting with that I message, saying the imp you can just describe what you see happening. Hmm. What you see happening. Can you give an example of that? Well, I think an example of that would be um, a hard startup would say, you don't help clean up. You never do the dishes. Mm -hmm. You never do the bench. Mm -hmm. That would be a hard startup. Yeah. How, yeah. how could I get that message across using a soft startup, do you think? Well, you give me an example of saying well you know requests hmm. politely yeah and it's often interesting the fact we were nicer to people at the workplace or a church particularly a church when we were supposed to be on our best behavior <laughs> we were often we're often nicer to people at the workplace and the church than we are to our loved one who uh, we spent the last 40 years with yeah, yeah who are much more precious and meaningful exactly. to us than anybody have else have a much more ongoing relationship yeah so i would appreciate it if Yes. You know, to start our sentences that way. And another one, number six, is giving appreciations. Yes. And something I used to, I read a parenting book a long time. Start up like that. But if it was said like, you know, I, I just love it when you make the bed in the mornings. Mm. It just, when I, when I go into the room after and see that, it just brightens up my day it makes me feel wow you know we can do this together hmm. uh, sometimes you do it sometimes I do it sometimes it doesn't happen at all um, but just to comment on what you appreciate and how that makes you feel when that good behavior hmm. does happen exactly. it reinforces the good behavior that's you know, something yeah. we've known for probably centuries yes so let's finish by looking at um, I think there's one verse in the Bible that just sums up this whole topic and it's speaking the truth in love. Mm. We want to be able to do that all the time, but it's particularly crucial when you're going to have a difficult conversation. Mm. Some of us major on speaking love, but without the truth, you know, we'll tippy toe around the truth and we'll never be specific. And then so relationships lose the capacity for what they could have. They're not nearly as enriched as much as they could be or as deep as they could be. You know, there's a wonderful well of resourcefulness mm. and wisdom that each one of you have got, but we don't use that capacity within ourselves or our partner if we're not being gutsy enough to be truthful, to be honest with the hard stuff, but to be saying it in love. And then others might major on telling the truth without mm. showing much love. Mm. And we all know when that's happened to us, you think, oh, that's really, <laughs> that's painful. Very yeah. painful. Could have said it just a bit more softly, a bit more lovingly, a bit more kindly. Um, so when we are able to speak the truth and with love, whoa, that is indeed such mm. a blessing. Mm. So we want to wish you all the best as you move out into these transitions. Just put in the chat box what's resonated for you today. Just one thing that has meant a lot to you through this session that you want to take home from this particular half hour that you've invested in your time with. And if you're on the replay, just you've also invested that half hour. And so just if you can just put in the chat box one thing that you're going to take home from this session and act on immediately. Make that decision to act on it because as COVID has brought many changes to how we live and how we're going to relate to each other in our future relationships and the wider community, we want to be able to help you to move through that transition and be peaceful and productive and life affirming in the way you go about it. Hmm. So until next session, be life affirming. Let your light shine and love each other through this transition. Thank you.